Hey, what is going on guys? So in this video, I'll be describing my experience with Windows 10 and some of the new features included with it. And I've been using Windows 10 on about five different machines, all from different manufacturers. And one of them is also the custom built PC that I made, that $2,800 PC. You can find a link to that video series on how to build a computer, that $2,800 PC specifically, in the video description. Now I've been using Windows 10 since it first came out and I'm using it for months. And I'm using it on different computer made manufacturers or my own custom built PC as I mentioned. And there's some good and bad to it. It's got some problems that are legit problems, but it's also got some new cool features which I'll be describing. So for those non-tech savvy people, people that just you know browse the web, use your Windows computer for whatever, if you're curious, there's a quick summary for you that don't really care about the little nitty-gritty details. Windows 10 is basically Windows 7 and Windows 8.1 combined to look like Windows 10. That's basically what Windows 10 looks like and is what is mainly what the core functions is comprised of. That's it, you're done this video. For everyone else, let's continue on. Now one of the most popular features of Windows 7 was split screen mode in which you can basically equally have two apps split down the middle. But of course this wasn't possible if you had a dual monitor setup. However, with Windows 10, you can indeed do this with dual monitors. I actually have two, even though you can only see one. But Windows 10 takes this a step further by allowing equal four corner split screen mode. So you can basically drag four apps into the corners and you'll have an equal split. Now on the topic of multitasking, you do have something new that's new to Windows, but it's actually been around for a while for other operating systems. If you hit the Windows tab key on your keyboard, you actually have an ability to create a new desktop. This allows for true multitasking. So for in this example, I could have all my video editing features and on my other desktop, I could have my casual web browsing functions going on. There will also be the support for universal apps, which basically means, for example, not limited to Microsoft applications, but if we were to take Microsoft Office, for example, you can use it on Windows 10 phones, Windows 10 machine PCs, or even Xbox. So those same apps you can use across all Microsoft devices but the UI and interface will change according to the screen size and what type of device you're using. And much like Mac OS, there's now a notification panel, but instead of being on the top right, it's at the bottom right where a lot of your notifications are displayed. So if you have, say, Microsoft Outlook from Office, a lot of your email notifications will be popped up here and populated. The Windows Start button is very similar to Windows 8.1 in which you basically have some plain old icon shortcuts here and you have some live tile ones you can create and expand and resize. However, the Start menu, you can actually expand the size and resize it however you wish and if it's too small, you can always scroll down individually depending on what you're selecting. Included directly into Windows 10 is a phone companion app which is not limited to Windows 10 phones. It actually works with Android and iOS devices basically allows you for greater sync between your mobile device and of course your Windows 10 computer. So for example, if you were to take the Photos app which is included with Windows 10, you can sync photos between this and your mobile device. So you can have the same photos available between either device. Now as a PC gamer, one of the things I'm looking forward to most is DirectX 12. What this basically means in a quick summary in a non-tech savvy way is that if your graphic card was decent and you couldn't handle a certain game with DirectX 12 support, it'll be able to handle games better than it ever used to. However, there's a limitation to this because current games do not support DirectX 12. You're going to have to wait for brand new games to be made that do support DirectX 12. The new virtual assistant which requires you to have a microphone because it's a virtual assistant which uses voice commands. That's of course is called Cortana. So you can give Cortana voice commands to say send an email, schedule an appointment in your calendar. Now the new Edge browser has been receiving a lot of hype. But honestly, it's not that fantastic. Well, for example, for starters, you have some unique features like basically being able to draw on whatever web page that you're using. And of course, you can share that web page drawing or just the web page itself through whatever various means necessary. However, it's very limited in some ways because it's not very friendly with additional add-ons. And I notice when I go to certain web pages, the Edge browser will bug out on me saying that it can't display this web page. And as an alternative, it'll open up Internet Explorer for me instead. Honestly, the Edge browser is more hype than it is practical. Whether you have a touchscreen computer or a non-touchscreen computer, they'll have something called Continuum, which will basically literally allow you to continue using your machine, whatever it may be. So for example, if you have a tablet, laptop 2-in-1, and has a keyboard attached to it, use the keyboard as a primary device to type. But as soon as you detach the keyboard, the screen will alter to a touchscreen interface and bring up, say, a touchscreen keyboard. This also works across with phones. If you have a Windows 10 device which supports it and is utilized on a special dock from Microsoft, 
and that dock is connected to say a physical computer keyboard, a monitor, mouse, etc., it'll turn your Windows 10 phone into a full Windows 10 computer. Hence why it's called Continuum because they want you to be able to continue your Windows experience no matter what. Now some features have been moved around from the traditional control panel into a new settings app. This is where you'll basically find key functions like Windows update settings, which is nice, but it's a very confusing process because you still have, as I mentioned, the traditional control panel, but then you have a new settings app. So this can be kind of confusing, and I just kind of wish that Microsoft would stick to one. Now there are some other little subtle changes here and there. For example, the calculator app has changed a little bit, but Microsoft has announced that Windows 10 is the last major Windows release. They plan to release minor patches to basically improve upon Windows 10. Now as for how long that's gonna last, I have no idea, but only time will tell. Now there are some additional features that are upcoming, but they're not mainstream yet, they're mostly in testing. One is of course, Windows Hello. So basically if you have a password set on your Windows 10 machine, well you can basically bypass it using new various methods which aren't really mainstream yet. One is of course a fingerprint scanner if your device has one. Another is if your device has a front facing camera and supports additional key functions in the back end of your machine which are kind of technical. You can use facial recognition to bypass the screen so it'll basically recognize your face that you're a real person and not a photo of someone holding up your photo and you'll bypass the lock screen. Another one of course is an iris scanner to scan your eyeball. Now as a PC gamer this one I'm really stoked about upcoming feature is of course cross gaming multiplayer function. So let's say for example it's not true yet. It it might happen. If we were to take Halo on Xbox and Halo on PC, we can actually face each other online. So I can face my friend who might have an Xbox, and have a PC, and we'll be fighting and shooting each other through a cross-platforming situation. Now this isn't new. Microsoft has done this before with Xbox, but it was kind of a flop. They didn't really put a lot of emphasis into it, but it might happen this time. What this also means for PC gamers is that the possibility that if there's a lot of exclusive Xbox games, it might be also exclusive for Windows 10 computers. So there's a lot of potential there and I think Microsoft is finally getting the fact that they can make more money off of this. But as I said earlier, it's not all that nice. There are some problems with it. For example, well, every single device, all the five or four devices I've tested this on are from different manufacturers. One is a PC that I built that cost about 2800 bucks. They all have driver problems. Not one of those machines were ready for Windows 10. Despite all of them being different machines from different manufacturers and all the websites for those particular models, even the PC I built says, it is Windows 10 ready, they are not. I always get these random pop-up errors or that this device has crashed and it just automatically resets in the background. It's annoying. Then there's an issue that Windows 10 itself is not ready. For example, if you hit the Windows Start button on your keyboard, you can start typing for an app you wanna search for, like Microsoft Word, which is installed because I have Microsoft Office, it won't show up in the list of results. Or if you were to open up, say, a file explorer window like Computer or My Documents on the left side, you get quick shortcuts, Sometimes they'll disappear. So who's to blame? The manufacturers that don't have the drivers ready and they lie to everybody? Or Windows and Microsoft for not having Windows 10 ready? I blame everyone. Windows 10 is not ready. The manufacturers aren't ready. Microsoft's not ready. Don't use Windows 10 yet if possible. A lot of people will say it works fine, but a lot of people like myself will also say it's buggy as heck. So what I suggest, if you don't have Windows 10 yet, wait until about mid to late year of 2016 and hopefully then we'll have a better working Windows. If you have Windows 10 right now, what are your thoughts on it? Have you used it and is it stable? Let me know in the comments section. So that's pretty much it for Windows 10 functions and features and the ugly side of things a little bit. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So be sure to check my Facebook, Google+, Twitter, Instagram links in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.